Gonna have to apologize. Something happened to my uh, SD card that I was recording off of, and all of a sudden it just stopped. Battery looks good, but it just stopped recording. So we're going to pick it up where we left off. I was painting this, and I was talking about finishing. And uh, give me a couple of minutes, and I'll, I'll run in there and, and in the garage and show you what I'm what I'm going to use. Because I use a mic, I use polyurethane sometimes, and I use lacquer sometimes. Anyway, I was talking about the difference between the model part of it and washing over it. I can, by the time I get done with it, you won't, you'll be, you'll, you'll, you'll enjoy what I did. I have left the face, beard, and then the eyes. So I'm going to undercoat the color with slate gray. Let me zoom in a little bit there. Okay, I want to do a little bit of slate gray, so I'm going to squash me out a little dollop of it. Clean out the nozzle. It's dirty. It's got dried paint in it. Come on. As they get older, they get dried at the bottom. Sometimes you can open up the lid. Squirt a little bit of water in there, but this doggone thing. We're going to have to be a little more aggressive in talking to it. Gosh dang it. Well, that's because it's all dried up. So we're going to throw that one away and reach over here and grab another. Slate gray. I think I got another one over here in a minute. I missed the garbage can. I got some more slate gray. That looks a little newer. Probably work better anyway. Here we go. There we are. Anyway, I want this to be an undercoating. I want it to have a, a, a hint of a gray under the white part of the beard. Just because I don't want a full straight white beard like it came out of a costume shop. I want Santa to have variations because I'll do this and I'll come over it with white and then if I get a chance I'm gonna I'm going to then come back and hit it with a highlight. Let's start at the back and make sure the hair is gonna look okay that color. Yeah we could probably add a little gray to or a little black to it but that makes him look a bluish gray. The slate gray does and I kinda like it. I think when we put the white over it'll be okay. You see me still grabbing hold of the of the thing even though I've got the holder in it. The problem with the holder is this thing wobbles a lot. As you get older you get a little bit shakier so I'm dabbing on it. See how it goes back and forth? If I'm holding it, I don't get as much dabbing. So I like uh, I like those on smaller carvings but not on the bigger ones. Just saying from, from my standpoint. Okay. Clean off when I splash a little bit there. Always have a brush ready that's either wet or it has access to water that you can dip it in water real quick to use as cleanup. It'll make it or your job a whole lot easier when you when you make a mistake rather than waiting on it, drying it, painting over it. it gives you an opportunity to fix it in situ, in place, while you're sitting there waiting on it. So I'm just going to splash this gray. As Chris says, put the gray where the gray belongs. And I want to cover it with this gray because the white that comes out underneath it or on top of it is going to be highlight color.
going back with a little thicker paint in some places where I slapped over the red so they can hide that. Hopefully nobody will see it and I won't say I won't hear holidays from anybody, even my wife. Okay. Like the way that's coming out. I'm gonna take a smaller brush because what I want to do is now do the eyebrows. Santa generally has bushy eyebrows, but don't make them overly bushy. Don't make them so big they look like literally a bush. Okay. Before I do anything else, I'm going to take a minute to, to hair dry it, to blow dry it. So watch yourself. I, I won't count down because if you're watching this video, you can always stop it and fast forward it. But as long as you see the hair dryer, it's on. And when I, when I move it, it'll, it'll come off and you can turn the sound back on. We'll go back in here and touch it up because there's a couple places where I need some gray in there and I'll just put it where it belongs. Alrighty then, a little bit of cool white we're going to put on there. And the first thing I'm going to do is dry brush it on there. We'll see how that looks and then <clears throat> if that looks okay <clears throat> pardon me if that looks okay we'll leave it there and if that doesn't we'll fix it you know I got a t-shirt that says ever made a mistake in life make them birds and then there's a couple of birds on the thing and because it's a Bob Ross t-shirt he's like yeah we all make mistakes make your mistakes birds and so he draws paints a couple swooshes of birds if you've ever watched him watched him paint does the swooshes of birds and all of a sudden there's birds in this picture. Can't beat that. I'm using a little makeup brush. I don't even know what the brand is. I've had it so long. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting paint on there. Getting paint in the brush. And then I'm gonna dab it off. I'm gonna get as much of it as I can off because when I go back over the hair, let's start let's start in the back. I just want to leave the impression of white on the outside. I don't want it down in those little grooves. I want the white to be across the top. I will still want some of the gray showing. And if you get a little bit over here, well, that's where you're going to highlight anyway. We've got a fairly neutral red. And so what we're going to be doing is coming back over that with a very, very light red. That'll pick up the highlights. And then we can go and do another layer of highlighting if we want to. And put a put an off color in there kind of like a buttermilk or something hoping you can see that I zoomed out a little bit so you could see what all I was doing I want to zoom back in here in a second now this is such a big brush that if I tried to do the eye, the eyelashes or the eyebrows I'd be in I'd be in a world of hurt. I'd have a lot of cleanup to do. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wash that one and make sure that it's completely washed and completely dry when I go to do the the, the dry brushing. And I've got a little one in here. I just bought some the other day and I don't know where they're at. But I'm looking. Hey, anyway, we'll we'll just grab a stiff brush. Get a little bit of white in there. Brush it off. Come right across those eyebrows. That, take that off. Right across those eyebrows. You want them white, but you don't want them completely washed out. A little bit more on that one. There we go. I think he's looking better all the time. He's probably sitting there saying, hurry up. I'm tired of, tired of hanging around on this stick. 
Get me off of here. Okay. What I'm going to do, because I painted the, we carved those eyes so small, there's a very little eye. Let's see what it looks like when we just do black in there. So I'm going to grab a little soft black. And I want to just, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use this. I found these eyeliner brushes on Amazon. It comes, I don't know, it comes 80 of them or whatever there is in here. But it is so tiny. This thing, look how little and sharp and pointed that thing is. We're going to be able to get some detail out of there. So I'm going to take the top off. My, my work table is getting a little messy here. I'm going to have to clear off a little bit. I just got paint on my finger. Ah, okay. I want to go in here and I want to dab it. And I just want a little bit on that brush. I don't need much. Can't even see it. I'm going to find out where the eyeball is and I'm going to paint across the eyeball. And one side. I want to get just a little bit more right over here. I don't need much. Let's take the rest of that off. I don't need much. Now, wash that off. I just wanted him to be smiling. And so another thing I'm going to do here real quick. Dab a paint in right there and wash it down. Almost, it's going to be almost like a stain. I want a little bit of a stain back in there, but not much. So I'm going to take that brush I first grabbed. I'm going to see what a little bit of stain back in that eyebrow does. Maybe give me a shadow. Maybe it will, and maybe it won't. Give me a little bit of shadow. Drop it on the floor. That ain't good. Okay. A little bit under the eyes. Just a little bit of color like it's back in that back in there in a in a wrinkle. Okay. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that little bitty brush again and I'm gonna get me a dab of white. I'm using this little makeup brush on a little dab of white and I'm going to give him the highlight on his eye. I like the way it looks. It wasn't what I intended when I started, but I like the way that looks. All right. We've got, uh, what do we got? One more step to do. And I'm going to take a, I got a Santa red that I painted with. And I'm going to come back with Brilliant Red. It's a, it's a, it's a brighter, lighter color. I hope you can see that. That's going to be my highlight. That's going to be my dry brush. I'm move, move some stuff out of the way real quick. Okay. I took this brush and I used it for hot for dry brushing. I washed it, I dried it, and it's still not dry enough. So I'm going to dry it again. You want this dry when you do this because if there's any water in your brush, it's going to smear it. And you don't want smears on your color. We're going to try this on the hat to see what it does first, because I can always repaint that hat. A little bit of red, get it in that brush. Let's see what it does. Is this going to be enough for me? Not sure it is. Might have to go with a little more of a off color. Yep, it's not going to work. So that light color. It'll show up if I grind it in there, but I don't really want to 
get too much. I don't know, I'm not sure if you can see much of that. That might be a might be an in-person thing that you see it. Let's try it across the back. That's a little better. I can see it coming through there. It's hitting up that facets. It's hitting those facets and bringing out a color of the robe that you don't necessarily see from one pass. All this is doing is adding another layer of detail. Make sure you get most of that off, otherwise you're going to end up with some orange orange looking colors over there. Don't be too heavy handed, you can always do more later. This is one of the two dry brushes I'm going to do. Just adding a little bit of color on that robe. Okay, so let's get all that red off of there. Take a minute to clear out my well here. Okay, dry brush. Wash it, scrub it, dry it off. Okay, let's get rid of the paints we know we know we're not going to use anymore. Black, raw sienna, desert tan, more black. That was brown back there. All right. I like to do highlights with buttermilk. Buttermilk is a good highlighter. It does pretty much what I want it to do. Make sure I'm completely dry. Do the same thing. I don't know about you, but I like using this newsprint. This is newsprint here. It protects my table, keeps me from making a making a mess everywhere, and I can just wad it up and throw it away when I'm done. Watch what this does when I do it across the hat. You see how I'm picking up highlights? This is the dry brush. This is one thing I'm gonna do over the whole carving except for face. I'm doing it all over the hat, all over the fur. Okay. This is going to offset that other high, high, dry, dry brush highlight that I did. This is going on the muffs. This is going on the robe. This is going on the fur. And I'm doing it very lightly. I'm not really grinding it in. I'm just using it to bring out the highlights. I'm as <laughs> I love Bob Ross and I listen to him whenever I can. He calls it three hairs and some air. So it's very light touch. So three hairs, some air. And I have probably more than three hairs in here, but 3,000 hairs and, air and, some, and a lot of air. But you see, this is still going. It's still pulling paint out of there. So if you had more paint, this thing could go forever. But I only want it to go lightly. I don't want a whole lot of heavy handed. I want these little facets to show up. You see those facets showing up when you do this. I may need to dip into that well again. Again, make sure you get 95% of that paint out of there. Otherwise, it'll overpower your carving. It'll give it too much and make it look like somebody just lathered it in milk. You don't want that. Santa don't need to look like he's taking a milk bath. Okay. I'm even going to do it on the base. I'm going to leave that base just as it is. Okay. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to lay Santa on the table while I run into the garage for a few seconds. I want you to take a look at him. Let me get him centered here. Zoom in just a little bit. 
I will be back in about 30 seconds. So for a long time I, I finished my carvings with polyurethane. This is Minwax Warm Satin. Does not give you a shine at all. I took Pat Moore's class and they use Deft Lacquer. Lacquer spray. I like the, what this does. I don't get a shine, but I get a sheen. The difference between a shine and a sheen is a shine looks glossy. A sheen looks like it has a, a surface coating to it. I've been using this for several months now. I like the way it turns out on my uh, on my carving. So we're done with him. Don't forget to sign the bottom of them. People always want to know who did it. And in fact, when I go to buy a carving online or whatever, I always want to know who did it. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was fun to do. I enjoyed it. Here's what we started with. I have not done the little dots, but you can do that. You know how to do that, the dot and the, and, the, and the line. You just take pure paint, and I run my paint. I could go back to that little, little, little bitty tiny brush if you just wanted a line down there. Those work perfect, and that would be the final detail that I would put on this, because we said red and gold sand is what this is. So we would do that, and I'm going to do that, and you'll see it in a finished video. So I hope you've enjoyed along the way. This has uh, been a lot of fun doing this one. I realize it's a little bit long, and that's what you get with these longer, bigger projects rather than small ones. Stay tuned. Subscribe. Hit my subscribe channel. Follow me on Eric Owens Carver and Instagram. Follow me on Eric Owens Carving on Facebook. Drop me a line. Let me know what you're doing. And if there's something you want me to do to show you how to do it, drop me a line too. I'll be glad to listen. So see y'all. Thanks for coming along.